Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Click PLC PID using Factory I.O. And up on my screen we have the Factory I.O. Uh, programming software. And if we look at File and then Drivers, you will see that we have our Modbus TCP IP client. Now, detailed information contained in this video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. This includes all the links to download the PLC and the factory I.O. scene. Now, if you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video one. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So once we collect our, or selected our Modbus TCPI client, we can look at the configuration. And under the configuration, you will see that we have our host port, which is 192.168.1.130. It's port number 502, which is the default for Modbus TCP. And our slave number is 1. Now our I.O. configuration, we have our read digital, which is slept for coils, and our read register set for holding registers. So then if we look at the actual I.O. points, our digital inputs start at, at an offset of 8201 and we have four of those and then we have digital outputs which start at 8205 which is just a continuation from our other ones. So all of our inputs output come from our coil area for our click PLC and our digital outputs our, digi our register inputs zero and we'll have our offset zero and we have three of them and our register outputs we have three it start our offset three because of the first three here and we have four of those so that is our configuration and we'll show you how we get this 8201 when we look at our click plc uh, address picker so if we go back to our driver and it automatically comes up with the I.O. here in our scene and we can actually uh, hit connect and when we hit connect it will actually give us a check mark saying that everything's okay and if we go back at our scene we can actually see that we now have communication to our PLC itself and what we can do is now we have a play that we can play our scene we can pause our scene or we can stop our scene so right now we have our scene, we have a fill valve up here which we will fill with water. We have a discharge valve right here that we set for a set value of 1.7 so that gives us a constant rate for our PID to function. We also have our panel here and on our panel we have our, um, our start, our stop and our reset button. We have our dial indication that controls our set point and our set points displayed right here and our present value is right here. So that is our um, that is our factory I.O. scene and our I.O. connecting to it. So now let's look at our click PLC program and under the interrupt program we have our PID. We'll look at the interrupt setup. It's actually set for 100 milliseconds. So Every 10, it'll operate this 10 times each second, it'll update our PID algorithm. So we'll hit cancel. And then what we'll do is actually look at that interrupt program. So here is our variables going in. We have our process variable or present value variable. We have our set point or SV variable. We have our calculate control output. So that is our output going to our fill valve on our scene. We have our I max. We have our I min, we have our P gain, our P, our I gain, and our D gain. So the math involved here, the first thing we do is calculate our error, and our error is based on DF2 minus DF1, which is our set point minus our present value. Now, if we were doing reverse action, it would just be the opposite. So if we look at our P, P uh, uh, gain, our proportional term, what we want to do is we take our error and we multiply by our P gain input. And that gives us a proportional term. Then what we do is we can calculate our, our integral or our I. So to do that, what we do is we take the sum of all the errors. So every 100 milliseconds, we will add the error to DF5 and store it at DF5. And we get this current integrator. 
Then what we do is we compare that current integrator to a maximum value of 1000 and we store the maximum value in or we can we also compare it to our minimum and store the minimum in so we don't want it to uh, go out of hand for us. Then what we do is we actually calculate that integral term by taking that current integrator and multiplying by our uh, I term which then gives us our integral term or df12. Then what we do is we can calculate we can calculate our d parameter and our d parameter is just the uh, the previous uh, error uh, and the next one. So if we look at the d term you will see that what we do is we take our df1 which is our present value and we store it at df14. So we take df14, so this gives us what the present value difference is, and we multiply that by our d term, and that gives us a derivative. And then finally, to get the actual output, our control variable, we take df11, df12, and df13, and add them together. That gives us a control variable to put on our actually fill valve. If we go and look at our main program, what you'll see is now we can take our I.O. from our factory scene and manipulate that around. So if we look at our address picker, the first thing we'll do is determine how we get those addresses in our factory I.O. to begin with. And when I call this up, we said that we're using coils, so that'd be the Y. And Y10 is our start from our factory I.O. So if we hit on the display Modbus address, you'll see that it starts with 8202. Now we selected 8201. That is because factory I.O. and the click I.O. or click I.O. Modbus addresses are offset by one. So that's how we get our addresses. And again, a full explanation is on our website at accautomation.ca. So here you can see we have our start signal and then we have our solve uh, PID uh, program. Now, what we do is um, we have our hardware and I just want to make sure that uh, we show the hardware and here we go. So we have our click right here and we have our Ethernet port connected back into the uh, PL or the computer and that computer is running our factory I.O. So that's how we're actually communicating. And we're currently communicating through here. So there's my start from my panel on my factory IO, and then my stop, and then my factory run will also stop it, run stop. Then what we have is our indication lights. So if we started it, then our start light will be on. If it's stopped, which it is right now, our stop light is on. And our if factory IO is not running, our reset light will be on. So we move the uh, factory I.O. Pan panel set point, so our dial indication, we'll move that to the set point um, of our panel. So that means as we turn our dial, the value on the panel itself will change. Then we have our uh, I.O. meter level. So what we'll do is take a look at the present value, and our present value comes from our meter level of the tank volume. Then what we have is we have to move our set point value in. So our set point value comes from DS6 and it moves to DF2. And our present value moves from DS7 into DF1. So that moves it in so that our PID parameters can now be adjusted. And finally, what we do is we have CF, uh, C1. And if it is on, then what we do is we take our output from our PID loop, which is DF4, and move it to DS4 the controller valve to fill up. Then if it's off, which it is right now, you'll see that we move zero into our present value and set value, and also into our actual valve that controls our water. We make zero so it turns off. So now that that's all, looks like it's running fine. We'll look at our factory IO again. Again, we're connected right here. We can set our set point. We'll say it's going to be 474. And what we can do is we can hit start. When we do, it will start filling up our tank. So we'll just move that over and you can see our tank now filling up. And what we'll do is just 
bring in our data view and our data view will show you actually our set point values as they fill up. Here we go. So you see right now there's 430 and 474 is our set point. So it's getting closer. So once it's near there, you'll see that our integration term kicks in and we start uh, using it to actually control it getting back up to the 474. So you see how easy it is to implement um, the math for a PID loop. And what we can do now is we could always um, reduce this and we'll just turn it down to 269. And you can see we are draining our tank now and it will eventually come down to 269 and even out on 269. So again, we can play with our, our discharge rate and then we can play with our auto tuning to get our level exactly where we want it. So we can also, all, uh, as mentioned before, we can stop this and we can hit play again. And what we can do is readjust our parameters. Put uh, something, how about 387? And what we can do is hit start. And automatically it'll start pouring our water level in. And we can just watch it as it goes up to the 387. So we trade off responsiveness with overshooting on our PID loop. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the little bell beside your subscription in order to receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.